Peculiar. Just remind ourselves of the very first episode I created on this subject, in which I said that in order for us to be able to speak of free will, we needed two ingredients. The first one was non predictability. There has to be at least some extent in which the behavior of a, an individual who is hoping to have free will, in which that behavior is not predictable. You shouldn't be able to look at an individual and calculate what they're going to do next. At least not in all circumstances. The second ingredient that I was looking for was the ingredient of control. The organism should feel that it is in control of its decisions. And at this point in time, we have sort of achieved both those goals. A couple of episodes ago I was looking at control and I arrived at the conclusion that the ultimate responsibility for a individual's actions, an individual who, who has a mind of their own, would have to be that individual themselves. They arrive at decisions, they formulate a goal, they formulate the will uh, through reason under certain circumstances and are then able to exert that will and make things happen. So the organism can be in control even if that control is not conscious. So we've got that. Then we were looking at formal systems and limitations of models of reality limitations of things like networks, we're looking at phase changes, and the picture that's emerging, emerging from there is that the mind is an object made out of neurons that behave according to very simple physical rules, but that then suffers from some very similar problems as, for example, Newtonian mechanics, where its predict uh, behavior cannot be calculated because it's the situation involves too many objects, too many neurons. We're looking at the brain, or at the mind, as a, as a system that looks in upon itself, is self-reflective. And we're looking at Gödel systems, for example, and we're seeing parallels there, where basically there are states of mind that cannot be resolved. So, in a real sense, we've achieved the, the, the first objective as well, because a mind is quite likely, obviously I can't prove any of this, but just from looking at what a mind constitutes of, and without invoking anything metaphysical or uh, supernatural, Gary, um, a mind is likely to be unpredictable to a certain extent. So, happy days, right? We've got free will. It's not quite as easy as that. Because it's not enough to just have those two ingredients. One would make us a puppet dancing to random strings. The other one would make us an automaton that, yes, is in charge of what it's doing, but it's doing so in accordance to fixed rules that it itself has no say on. With, can these two ends ever meet in order to give something that is a bit more satisfactory as something that can be labeled free will? Well, let's look at a couple of pathological conditions that affect free will. For example, the first condition I want to bring up is hedonism. Hedonism is a state in which a person no longer applies any sort of moral judgment on what they're doing, 
they just immediately respond to any want or need that the body uh, brings to their consciousness. So if they feel the urge to have sex, they just go and have sex. If they feel the urge to eat, they eat. They do whatever they please. Whatever, more importantly, whatever they want. Are these people free? Well, in a sense they are, because their body freely comes up with all these wants and needs. But are they in control? No, they are not. Because their body dictates what their wants and needs are, and they just follow blindly. They are a slave to their needs and desires. So they can't be said to have free will as such. The other pathological condition I'm going to outline is that of fundamentalism. Being a fundamentalist believer in any sort of religion. This removes the, the ability of the body to arrive freely or it, it, it removes the unpredictability of a person's actions. That's what I was going to say. Even though the body might come up with wants and needs and the mind of such a person is unpredictable in principle, when it comes to formulating their goals, they look at a rule book. They look at a set of instructions, almost like a program and simply follow those instructions slavishly, thereby eradicating this unpredictability. You can predict with certainty what a fundamentalist is going to do by simply understanding their religious text fully. And that is also a loss of free will. So in order to achieve, to be even, for it to be even possible to have something remotely like free will, one must find that middle ground, one must find that, that point where the two extremes meet and balance each other out. And that is what I'm going to try and explore next.